On this worksheet called Donut, we've got some data. And what if we were thinking about creating a chart? We'd like to see the breakout across domestic and Europe and Asia by month. Our first thought might be, let's select this data and create a pie chart. Now on the Insert tab in the ribbon, the icon for pie also includes Donut. But let's say you were trying pie, maybe a 3D pie. And right away, the preview might make you a little bit nervous about the thought that, are we really going to be showing all that data? And immediately, we see the heading that says domestic. A pie can't show three ranges of data. Can't do that. We don't have that option, whether it's 2D or 3D. So let's reconsider here. We can change the chart type or start all over. But how about change chart type? And we see in the section here under pie, the options that are there. Farther down the list, where's donut? We don't see it here. So that could be a little bit perplexing. However, we did see earlier when we went to insert next to pi, we see donut. So we could go this path. Let's choose donut. And maybe that's looking pretty good at first. But the problem is, even though we see a legend below that, uh, we don't have any labeling going on here. And how about the centerpiece there? Isn't that donut hole somewhat larger? If we double click one of these inner ring areas, you'll see to the right, dialog box format data point donut hole size. Now you can start clicking the drop arrow here, watch the hole get smaller, or maybe just cut to the chase here, make it be 10 or something like that. And you'll decide, of course, how good that's really going to look. We see some choices, but without labeling, I'm not sure this is going to look so good. And even though you might want to show all 12 months, consider, could we have two of these and have the breakout by six months? Well, that might defeat the purpose of what you're after, showing the entire year. But nevertheless, just to show how that might look, I'm shrinking the data here by dragging the dialog box in the lower right-hand corner to show only six months. Now, again, that may not have been your initial objective, but ultimately, this is likely to be easier to read. Or maybe another argument could be at some points, well, let's just show two regions. Once again, you might say, we've got three. Why not show all three? But what I'm trying to point out here is that even without labels, I think you can begin to see that these charts are either too crowded or just not capable of showing all the data. So how do we add the labels? Easiest way, probably, with the chart selected, the plus button to the right. Let's add data labels and see what happens, first of all. The numbers are there, and the colors tell us which month it is. But is the outer ring or the inner ring, is it domestic or Europe, or what's going on there? Data labels to the right. Let's click that arrow. More options. And then possibly here on the icon to the right, label options, label options. And it looks as if for the moment that only the inner ring is being selected. So we can click outside of it. But now it switches to format chart area. Let's go back to that plus again, data labels, click the drop arrow, more options. And once again, it highlights the inner ring. That's a little bit confusing. We do have some choices here. Let's look at these just for label options initially on the inner ring and recognize the problem that we'll have with these. Here's the category name. Now, you probably can't see that too well, but that's the month. We probably don't want that since it's part of the legend below. How about the series name? Well, the problem here is, and again, it's difficult to read, even when I make the chart bigger, we see the word domestic in every sector here. So there's really not good labeling possibilities here unless you do this manually on the side. Now, if you're familiar with how to add free-floating text, you simply could click on the chart area here. We could go to the Format tab and Insert Shapes here. Click the text box. Click out here and say something like Inner Ring dash Domestic. So possibly that's one option to consider this and get rid of these labels here. Once again, clicking them here. Off to the right, click that Label Options button, Label Options, and let's take off Series Name here. So possibly we're stuck with the numbers. But the percentages are worthwhile, too. So clicking outside, we see what's happened there. Now, once again, we have this issue. Can we read those that clearly? And sometimes it's just a question of the color of the text or the color of the background. So another option here is if we're clicking on one of the labels, they're all selected. On the Home tab here, is a white background going to work better? Well, maybe, maybe not. But notice again the way the numbers run into each other. So I'm not making a strong case here for the value of donut charts. And yet, from time to time, I think you can see if, if the visual is most important, maybe the percentages, maybe the numbers are not that important. You know, reconsider coming back here, getting rid of some of the numbers possibly under Label Options. 
Maybe take off values, leave just the percents. How's that going to look? Maybe that's a bit better. So different options here by way of a donut chart. And if we were to make this larger to have a third ring to include Asia, I think you can again see the, the problem here with crowding. And yet it is a chart worth exploring. Not too widely used, but it is an attempt to answer some of the shortcomings of pie charts. The next chart type to the right is called bubble. Now, this is somewhat like a scatter chart that you might have seen in a previous movie, but we've got three kinds of categories here. And one of the problems you'll see with this kind of chart is the interpretation possibilities here. So with this data being highlighted here, let's go to the insert tab. If you're looking for bubble chart, you're not going to see it at first. What kind of a chart is bubble chart? What's it related to? Is it one like this? It's sort of like a scatter chart. I guess you could say it that way. I'm sliding over a choice here, a choice there. There's a three-dimensional choice. That's one way to get to it. Another way could be, and, and maybe uh, just by accident, you say, I want to create a chart for this. Let's go to recommended charts. What are we seeing here? Some choices up and down the left-hand side. Well, gee, there's a possibility. Yeah, it doesn't look so good. How about all charts? And there's bubble. But where's bubble in here? It's an XY scatter chart. It's one of those choices that we don't see in the list here, and yet it's available this way. How about that? That's somewhat like what we saw before. This one to the left looks a little bit confusing, maybe. How about the one to the right? That one's not so clear either, but let's give this one a shot. Now, here's the issue and why the, initially these are difficult to, to read. And here, too, like in some previous examples, we need to adjust the scaling to make this more viable. We're tracking age and salary and rating over here. And it looks like, and we can see across the bottom, the ages probably begin around 20, go to 55 or something like that. Let's double click the X axis at the bottom of the screen. And that activates the format axis dialog box to the right. We can click the axis options and consider the minimum here, make it be 20. And then click on the maximum panel. And possibly that needs only go to 55. There we go. And you see the chart reacting, of course, immediately. So that helps. And it looks like the salaries here begin at about 35,000. They go 115,000, something like that. So similar over there, although not nearly as important. Double-clicking the Y-axis on the left-hand side, the vertical axis. We'll see some choices there. Let's make the minimum be, let's say, 35,000. And then tabbing into maximum there. Looks like it did an adjustment that looks just fine. So what are we seeing here? So we're actually seeing three measures. And so across the bottom, we're seeing age. As we slide over the one of the buttons, that'll give us some insight into it. This represents someone who's 44 years old, makes almost $75,000. The job rating is six. So the size of the bubble has to do with the job rating. The larger bubble up above, that person there, as size nine, that's the job ratings. The ratings go from one through nine. So the size of the bubble represents the actual rating. The location of the bubble, first of all, based on the x-axis at the bottom, represents the age of the person. The y-axis off to the left represents the salary of the person. Now, I often remind people that when you're creating charts, particularly for presentations, if you find yourself spending a long time explaining how to read a chart, maybe it isn't the best chart. So that is something to be keeping in mind as you work with these. I think they have some value, at least in some situations. And, and here's something else to consider, too. If we were to double-click any of the bubbles, once again in the dialog box to the right, series options, and you'll see a choice here called size represents area of bubbles, but look what happens if I click width of bubbles, changes. It makes it less cluttered. But here's something to notice as I click back on the chart. Here's a bubble right here, and the job rating for that person is 2. It says size 2. The outer or larger bubble is size 6. Does that look three times as big? To me, it looks a lot bigger. So the question is, how are people reading this? So off to the right again, clicking one of the bubbles, back to this icon, we do have the choice of scale bubble sizes. This will make them all smaller proportionally, but consider how this is going to look by switching back and forth between area of bubble and width of bubble. We've got some choices there, but then maybe, what if we were to make this be 75%? Press enter. Makes all the bubbles a bit smaller. So you just want to experiment with that a little bit and see whether this is telling the story. And I think when you are making presentations of data like this, 
Again, give it some strong thought as to how involved you want to be and how much time you're spending explaining uh, how this is readable. But I think it does make some sense, and you can get a picture of what's going on here in this organization based on a bubble chart. Now, the next sheet to the right is called a radar sheet. And this is a chart type that you won't see that often. I heard years ago that they were widely used in Asia, but I'm not sure if that's the case. We'd like to show some kind of a chart that relates orders to shipments. And there's certainly all kinds of possibilities here. Maybe we'll just click in here and press Alt F1 and remind us that, you know, maybe this chart here tells the story well enough. It shows that on one day of the week and one day only, shipments exceed the orders. On other days, it's the reverse. So that could be viable. But let's do show this in a different way. And I'll change the chart type here. We'll change it to one of these radar charts. And some options here. We see these three choices. How about that one? That one? Arbitrarily, I'll pick the middle one here. Now, it remains to be seen how clear that is. And maybe, again, a little bit of explanation. But I think maybe this brings out the issue in a different kind of way. Think of the center as being zero. And as we move outward, the numbers are larger. But this gives us a clear indication that on Wednesday, shipments, which are represented by the orange line, exceeded orders represented by the blue line and the point there. So it's a different way of displaying the data. Once again, you might be perhaps caught in that little trap of spending too much time explaining it. But if people become used to these in your environment, you know, maybe these are considered you know, pretty decent charts for giving you a, a quick visual. And by the way, uh, since we're using six days, this uh, has six sides. It looks like a hexagon. If we were using five days, it would look like a pentagon and so on. So uh, depending upon how many entries we have here, you don't want to get sidetracked by the idea that there is a shape in there. We're actually talking about different axes, really. So it's a different way to display the data. And for some situations, I think it has merit. And early in this movie, we saw bubble charts, and there too, the potential problem of spending too much time explaining how to use them, and yet they have a role to play. And also donut charts, a feature you have to work with to make clear, but there too, a chart worth considering in some situations.